hey everyone, this is going to be my second unboxing video. My first one was in the Hall of the Mountain King. I'm not so into the unboxing videos, I mentioned this last time, uh, but with miniature games I will probably make exceptions, especially with these ridiculous big box Kickstarters. Now to begin with, with this one, as excited as I am, you can probably see that nice little dent over there. Uh, the box came with this one, the one that was at the edge. It got hit. I have a customer service request out to IDW. At the end of the day, it's just a box. I want it to be nice, obviously, but I have a lot of boxes here, so we'll see how it plays out. With that being said, let's go ahead and cut into it. So, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is not a theme or game I've been particularly interested in. It is... It is one that I, I passed on the initial one, uh, Shadows of the Past. I completely had no interest in it. But since then, my kids have gotten very into the, the genre. The, 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 not the genre, the game. The, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. My kids love it. Uh, my son loves making Shredder Claws. It's, you know, he, he's... It's actually adorable. The other day, yesterday, he told me that a bunch of kids were making fun of him. This is my five-year-old. A bunch of kids were making fun of him at school. And so he's looking at me, and I'm feeling bad. And he's like, but it's okay, because I just made Shredder Claws. And they ran away. So that was amusing. But anyways, so this one, let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got here. I was going to back on this initially as well. I changed my mind because it looked like the miniature sculpts were much better the second time round, based on watching some of the videos that were being put out. Uh, we'll see if that's the case or not, but this is, you know, comic or setup. This is scenario setup. It says adventure comic. It looks like this is probably the scenario setup, based off of a page like this. Doesn't look like a comic otherwise. Uh, in which case, I like it. It's Oh, it's both. It's both. It's combining a comic with adventure setups. That's nice. I appreciate that. That's a cute little touch. In any case, we have that. This is a rule book, or what is this? Rule book. Again, this is very, very comic book. They took... I'm not sure how I feel about that. I like the immersion aspect of making it a comic book. Uh, the material seems fine. It doesn't seem to be compromised. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm okay with the way they uh, did that. In any case, here we get the miniatures for the game. So offhand, I will say, based on these guys and these guys alone, I'm not so impressed. They look nice, don't get me wrong, they're not bad, but nor are they particularly amazing. The ones in the Kickstarter look like they had a chunkier look to them, which I liked. Uh, I did not, these ones look a little more akin to the first Kickstarter, which they're nice, they're totally fine, I have no real complaints. The, the level of detail is fine while not being amazing. Here you can see over here if you try to look at her face like that. I don't know how well you can see but that's that's not a great face. It's not the worst. I've seen far worse. I've also seen far better. Uh, here we have Shredder Claws. This is one of the guys my son will play with. My kids will both play with a lot. Uh, but if you look at the molding line, the way that's not really fully fixed on, it's it's okay. It's totally okay. I'm not blown away, but I'm not complaining either. Uh, this one I like. Nice and chunky. Uh, this will be fun to play with. And then we got the big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle as well. And again, look at the mold line of the way, I don't know as you can see, the way that, that head is not really fully on the body. It looks like it's clearly separated. Yeah, it's, it's again, totally okay while not being blown away. Anything particular here that I want to take a look at? I'll take a look at this one more in this tray. Beep Bop. I think it's Beep Bop. It might be Rocksteady. I'm really not. Again, the mold lines, you can see in the mouth, there's a clear gap there that makes it look like it's two different parts to his head. At the end of the day, my kids will really enjoy this, which is really half the reason I got it. Let's see what else we got over here. We have more mini trays or we have tiles. It looks like we primarily have more cards, tiles. I mean, these are nice at least. I believe the original one had warping boards. We'll see if this one does, but it feels nice um, and premium. So it um, does not look like these will warp, but time will tell. We got the bases, the dice, the cards. Uh, this is not going to be a fully in depth, crazy unboxing. It's just an overview. I prefer to keep this one not to 20 minutes like some of my other videos. Anyways, that is box one of 740, or it feels that way. There's a lot of a lot of small boxes in this one. Okay. 
and it's going to be fun to get back on. That dented box. Box one is done. On to box two. So yeah, like I said, I'm not really into the theme. Um, I do not, for the record, I do not get games just because they have minis and my kids will play with them. It is a factor in my decision making. Like for instance, The Great Wall, which is one I recently backed, I was very heavily debating backing out of that one and getting it down the road eventually. Uh, but it's the minis in there. My, my other son particularly loves China and anything to do with China. And the various minis there, the dragon, uh, castle, the cannons, all those definitely did push me over the edge. Uh, so my kids liking miniatures of a certain genre or type will be a factor in my decision making, but it will not be the, the reason. I will not back a game just because I like it. Like Arcadia Quest, they loved the miniatures, but once I decided I was not interested in the game, they I got rid of it. I explained to them, I do not keep games that I'm not playing. I will happily get games for them, or get and try to keep them, or see whatnot, but if I don't like it, I don't like it. It is what it is. Okay, here we got the mousers. Let's see what we got. Yeah, these these uh, teenage mutant ninja turtles do look a little better. Um, I'm not sure. I really, I, I kind of want to go back and look at some of the the videos that came out, but it does not look like these are the same miniatures. These guys do not look as chunky. Oh, these are going to be a pain to get out. Oh my gosh. Okay, the hole here, these holes are too small to fit your fingers in, realistically. I'm trying, like, I mean, this is really me trying to get these out. Okay, this is going to be an absolute pain. Okay, got one out. You're basically gonna have to shake the box upside down. It does not look like they're clipped in, so that'll be fine. Yeah, they're cute. I, I really do recall them being chunkier in the original videos. I don't know if that's a change or not. This guy is definitely nice and chunky. I like chunky minis. I'm not I'm not as much of a fan of realistic body proportions. I, I like it when they come across a little chunkier. Uh, like many Simon minis have that. You can take a look at them. They have a little chunkier body proportions than a realistic mini. Like the turtles got a little bit of a chunky feel. Nothing crazy. We're not talking about chibi. We're just saying there's a little more heft to the body compared to. Like even this, like this one feels already a little, little more actual body proportion compared to the chunkiness I'm looking for. It feels weird to continuously say chunky 14 times. And again, the, the look at that face. That face is, is terrible. It's almost, it's actually, you know what, actually I'm going to go ahead and pause this video for a second. So I pause that just to grab this. This is the the Zombicide Mutant Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Pack from Simon, uh, and it's 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 almost it's really a shame. So if we pull out one of these miniatures and we compare and contrast the level of detail here, look at that face and the way it's like falling apart. Look at the mold lines on those arms, the way it's, like you can clearly see it's separate pieces glued together. This is not an impressive mini. Compare that to the level of detail this guy has. You can see the squint in his eyes. There's barely a mold line to be seen. Look at the shell. Look at the detail on the shell. This is like two completely different levels of quality. I mean, this is why people talk, people give Simon a lot of flack about the lack of communication, and it is something that they can and should improve upon. I'm not disagreeing. Look at the, look at the bandana. Look at those, look at the difference in the bandana. It's just, it's crazy. But yeah, Simon gets a lot of flack for not communicating as much as they should, and that is something they should definitely improve upon. But I will take a lack of communication every single day if it means that I'm getting, not if it means, but I will take a lack of communication along with a better end product than just having a, you know, communication but no end product. It's, yeah, it, it, it's a shame that these are, they kind of feel like they're the same level as the original Kickstarter. And from the videos, I thought that they were going to be a lot better. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with them. They're, they're just not super impressive. Anyways, that's box two. I'm assuming it's going to be more of the same underneath here. More boards, 
cooperative mode. Oh yeah, so one of the reasons I did get this one, compared to the other one that I did not, the Shadows of the Past, is the solo slash cooperative mode. It makes it so much more likely that a mini heavy game will get to the table. I am not, I'm simply not going to pull, especially my, my kids are uh, five, uh, I should know this, four, six, and uh, eight. This one's a pretty, this one's actually a pretty good one. All things considered, the level of detail in this one's actually pretty nice. I'm okay with this one. Uh, but yes, yeah, so my kids are younger. I'm not going to play a conflict game with them, with minis, where it's a skirmish game and I'm fighting against them. Uh, my eight-year-old, maybe, the others, not so much. And a cooperative game is just more likely to get to the table with both my wife and with my kids. Uh, with my, oh, geez, another box issue on this one. Yeah, it does not look boxed well. I mean, given the sheer amount of content that I knew this game was coming with, I was surprised to see the smaller box, and unfortunately it looks like there was a price to that. Okay, let's see what else we got. We got some spinner life dials, which I will put together later, so it's not to bore you guys completely crazy. Then we have the stretch goals box, which is lame, but it'll, again, functional. And again, even this box, it's... It, I've seen plain stretch goal boxes. This one looks worse than most. Okay. I will say this, it is a heavy, heavy stretch goal box. So what do we got here? We got, it's basically a full nother game. It's almost a full nother game. Yep. These can go in here. Okay, okay. what do we got? We got the Birdman. Again, this box is, you know, look at the damage it's sustained. This is not meant to be shipped this way. Okay, so these are definitely some fun minis. We got the croc, the bird. Let's see what we got here. Okay. We got Pete, Pete the Pigeon. We have this bird guy, who looks pretty fun. And again, mold lines, you can see the all the joined lines are just terribly done. I feel like I'm being overly critical, maybe I am. Uh, but it's okay, it's fine, it's, it's not the worst, not the best. This one I like, I like the, again, still see the mold lines, but at least I like the level of detail, the ridging it has. Feels fun. We got Croc. Again, Croc's got a nice level of detail. But again, every single piece that has been glued together, you can see it feels like 14 different pieces. It does not, I don't know. And again, this goes back to the skinniness I talked about. These models look like they are primed to break in a heartbeat. Uh, they're just skinny, they're flying mousers, they're cool, I like them, my kids will like them. I am, I mean, my kids play with a lot of my games and very few of my games actually break despite that. I have a handful of games that have actually experienced any form of breakage, which are usually quick and easy to repair. I am certain that this is going to be one of those games. It does not look like it's meant to uh, sustain even this, I can't get this to, I don't know, okay. Well, we're back in the, you know what, I'm not going to try to put it back in right now because we're already running late on time here. What do we got over here? So this is the secret history of the Foot Clan with some more minis. I like the box in this. Okay. Overall, this is a lot of content, especially with the boxes being damaged and whatnot. I'm leaning towards incorporating a lot of stuff into fewer boxes and ditching the trays. Especially those mousers. I mean, the way those guys did not come out of the box at all, I am not looking forward to keeping the tray and having to dump them out each time. Yeah, again, totally fine. Not impressed. It's a shame. I have become jaded. But this goes back to the thing I say time and time and time again, good isn't good enough anymore. Uh, y y people have got to step up their game. 
not from any stance of what you quote unquote have to do, but just from a stance of if you want to keep people's business with every other company, with new companies joining the market every day, with new Kickstarters popping up, with new, and, and this not just applies to Kickstarter, this applies to, to everything. Yeah, this applies to, to any game that new games are constantly coming out, new publishers are constantly coming out, new companies, and the ones that do exist are constantly stepping up their game as well. Uh, many of them are, at least. So when a company doesn't, when a company lacks in any way, whether that's gameplay, whether that's production quality, whether that's uh, communication, I mean, don't get me wrong, my, what I said about Simon applies, that I'd rather their games be good, but communication's a factor, because as soon as a company comes along who has good communication and good gameplay and good production, suddenly you're left out on the cold. Uh, looking at this game, I believe IDW is coming out with a Batman-related game shortly. That's supposed to be the same idea as this game. I will tell you right now, unless, because of the miniature quality I'm seeing here, specifically because of the miniature quality I'm seeing, Unless the gameplay is amazing, meaning unless I get to play this game before the Kickstarter um, and I find the gameplay thoroughly engaging, I do not imagine I'll be getting it. Uh, these, these sculpts are fine, but when I'm looking at the next Kickstarter, I, can, I will not be sold on the shiny sculpts because this, this whole box, everything I'm seeing here, is just okay. It's just okay. It's, it's, this company should have teamed up with Arkham Studios, uh, meaning one company is producing amazing miniatures and subpar gameplay, another company is producing subpar amazing gameplay, supposedly, and subpar miniatures. I want both. I want both because nowadays you can get both. Uh, so it's... I'm not saying I won't back it, but I, at this point I need more than just the reviews of the gameplay, I need more than just the minis because I'm not impressed with the minis, and rather for this game I need... I need... what's it called? I need, I need both. I need it to be... I need, I need to play the game, sorry. I need to play the game because if I play the game and my kids love it and I enjoy it and everyone's having fun, then I'm happy to go ahead and buy it despite the subpar miniatures. Uh, this one's actually not bad. Wait a second. This might be the first, nope, never mind. I was gonna say this might be the first one without obvious joint disconnects, but right over here, big joint disconnect. The rest of them are not bad though, honestly. Even the head, it's not, this one is not, that poorly done. But again, it's it's good. It's totally fine. When you're comparing this to uh, Kickstarters from five years ago or minis from five years ago, and this is blowing it out of the water, but I'm not comparing it to minis from five years ago. I'm comparing it to the current landscape. The current landscape demands better if you want people's limited dollars. Uh, I Thankfully, I, I back far more than I should, but nonetheless, my dollars are limited. Uh, it, we can't there's very few people who are sitting there just spending money willy-nilly. Just because I run a board game store does not mean I have infinite money. In fact, anything is the other way around. Board game stores are a great way to have fun making money, but they are not the best way to make money. Uh, this one is not look... I'm reluctant to... There we go. Didn't want to rip that. Okay, we got some more. It's just another set of miniatures, and again, it's it's really a shame. It's really a shame. This is just, it's passable at best. There's no comparison to the, the Simon one. Fortunately, I have both, but it is what it is. To the point, then we have the deviations pack. I'll, I'll go ahead and open this. We're close enough to the end now. That may as well open the last two boxes. Ultimately, there's a lot of content here. I hope I do like the game. Uh, is that a, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm totally fine either way. Uh, something I constantly tell my wife is whether I like a game or don't like a game, it's a win. Because if I like the game, well, then I have another game that I like. And if I don't like the game, well, I can get rid of a game because every single game that I have is taking out time and energy away from other games that I want to play. So not liking a game is an excuse to get rid of that game when play something else instead. The only thing I don't like, the only thing I don't consider a win is, let me see if we can get all these sculpts up here. The only thing I don't consider a win is when I like a game, but I'm not sure how much. And there's many games that fit this genre. There's many games where I play the game. Let's, let's, let's say right now, even for instance, uh, there's Glenmore, there's Barbarians the Invasion, there's, there's, what else, there's Marvel Champions. Uh, this is a bit of a spoiler to the review I'll put out. But these are all games that I, I like. 
but I'm not sure just how much I like them. I don't love them. I'm not in love, and therefore I'm debating whether I should keep it or not. Am I just keeping a game that's good when I already have too many games that are great? This is a lot of dice over here. I don't know what's going on here. What is this? What is this? This is the the villain upgrade pack. I have no idea what this is. I don't remember. Component list. I guess it upgrades villains somehow. I don't really know what it is, but there's no minis in this box. Either way, uh, that's basically the unboxing of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles City Fall. Lots of stuff here. Um, I am excited to play this. All my negativity is purely based around the, the miniature quality. Uh, at the end of the day, I've said this before, I've said this about uh, Arena, the contest. The miniature quality is secondary to the gameplay. I mean, take a look at this miniature. I have Horrified set up on the table, so I'm just grabbing this from Horrified. This is from Horrified and is abysmal. This is not a good mini. Then again, I don't care because Horrified so far, in my one play, is fun. I'm enjoying it. If a game is fun, I don't care. I shouldn't say I don't care. If a game is fun, I will keep it over a game with good minis. Again, though that I mentioned Arkham Studio earlier, the Arkham Studio games I have are almost certainly going away once I play them. Whereas this game, if it holds up to the reviews, then I will keep it, I will happily keep it, and I will not stop whining, but slow down on the whining. Uh, ultimately, this is, this is the uh, first world problem of the board game hobby we are in. That's basically it. I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. This is the Board Game Co. unboxing video. Head on over to our site, boardgameco.com. You can buy games. We have tons of stuff that you can't normally find anywhere else. You ha we have used games, new games, whatever it is you can imagine finding that, well, is out of stock because we keep both the new and the old. Other than that, you can sell us your games if you're trying to rotate your collection. You can also trade games with us. Just reach out to us at, you know, info at boardgameco.com or you can message us on Board Game Geek. Our profile name is, surprisingly, Board Game Co. That's basically it. This has been a fun unboxing video and I will see you next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.